Okay, in this video we're going to do an example of finding an area uh, where the region is bounded by a, a couple different curves, I guess a few different curves here. So, um, In this one it's going to be bounded by the line y equals 1, y equals the square root of x plus 1, and then y equals 7 minus x. So again, usually to uh, get started on these, I always like to try to, you know, if they seem like relatively, you know, uh, manageable functions, I like to try to get a, you know, a decent little graph. So let's see, uh, I'm going to graph square root of x plus 1. So square root of x plus 1 would just be, you know, the square root function moved up one unit. y equals 1, well, that's just going to be a, um, a, a horizontal line. So probably not to scale here. And then when we graph 7 minus x, uh, that's going to be a straight line with a y-intercept of positive 7. And then it has a slope of negative 1, so it's just going to go down through there. And we want to find, again, the area um, of this region sort of trapped inside of here. So to do this one, we have to be a little careful because we're actually going to have to chop this up into two different regions um, if we integrate with respect to x, which we will in this case. Notice kind of the top function over, uh, and we'll have to figure out this x-coordinate as well. Uh, notice the top function over the, you know, kind of this part will be the square root uh, of x plus 1. The bottom one is just the line y equals 1. But then this, uh, as we move over past this point of intersection, the region is going to be bounded above by this line uh, 7 minus x, and still bounded below by y equals 1. But what that tells me is we're going to have to break this up into uh, basically two integrals. So let's try to calculate sort of this first little uh, shaded part, the area of that. Well, again, to do this, I'm going to have to figure out the point of intersection. Um, you know, one thing that's nice a lot of times is they'll end up being kind of nice uh, whole values. Um, I think if we plug in even, uh, let's see, x equals 4, for example, the square root of 4 is 2. 2 plus 1 would give us 3. So that would be the point, uh, maybe the point 4 comma 3. Well, again, notice if you plug 4 into the line, we'll get 7 minus 4, or y equals 3. But again, to figure that out, we can just set things equal to each other. So square root of x plus 1 equals 7 minus x. And recall to, do, uh, to solve these types of equations, basically we try to uh, isolate the radical. So I'll do that by, getting, uh, by subtracting 1 from both sides. So that'll give us 6 minus x. And then we square both sides to get rid of the, uh, the square root. So again, just a little old algebra stuff in case you have forgotten this. So let's see, the square root of x squared is x. This would be 6 minus x times 6 minus x, which would give us 36 minus 12x plus x squared. So I'm going to make the left side equal to 0 by subtracting x. I'm going to write the x squared first. So we would have x squared, we would have negative 13x, and then um, plus 36. And I think this is going to factor nicely. Um, I guess we would get x minus 4 times x minus 9. Um, does that look all right? I think so. Um, so in this case, it says they're going to cross it. Maybe x equals 4, x equals 9. You kind of have to check when you deal with uh, square roots. Um, what's going to happen in this case is uh, this 9 is actually going to be an extraneous solution. So um, really what's going on here, well, I guess we have to be a little careful. Um, notice if we plug in 9, uh, we, we would simply get, well, the square root of 9 would be, again, 3 plus 1, we would get 4. But certainly when we plug 9 into this equation, um, they're not equal. But again, hey, if we do plug in x equals 4, we do find that correct point of intersection. So to set this integral up, uh, the first part, we'll just go from x equals 0 to 4. Well, the top function is, again, just square root of x plus 1. And then we'll subtract away the bottom function, which is just, you know, y equals 1. So all of that with respect to x. Well, really, we're just integrating the square root of x, since the positive 1 and negative 1 will cancel out. That's x to the 1 half dx. Well, if we integrate, uh, we'll add 2 over 2 and get 3 over 2. And then we'll have to divide by 3 over 2. But again, that's the same as multiplying by 2 over 3. Then from 0 to 4. 
So if we plug in 4, we'll get 2 thirds. Uh, we'll get 4 to the 3 halves power, but I'm going to write that as 1 half cubed, just so I can kind of think about, you know, that's how I like to think about it when I evaluate it. When we plug in 0, we'll just be left with 0. Well, the square root of 4 is 2, 2 cubed is 8, 8 times 2, to me it looks like this is going to give us a value of 16 over 3. So again, that's just sort of, uh, you know, this part that we have shaded so far. What we'll have to do next is figure out sort of the other part as well. And to figure out the other part, again, we'll just do the same thing. We'll take the top function, which again is 7 minus x. Okay, and now we need to go up to this x-coordinate, uh, whatever that may be. Well, we would have to figure that out. Well, to figure that out, again, it's the intersection between the line y equals 1 and the line y equals 7 minus x. So if we set those equal to each other, well, we can add the x over. We can subtract the 1. So that would give us x equals 6. So now we've got um, our limits of integration. Again, we'll take the top function, which is 7 minus x, subtract away the bottom one, which is just uh, y equals 1, uh, dx. So again, here we're just integrating from 4 to 6. I guess we'll get 7 minus 1. We'll just be left with uh, 6 minus x. So when we integrate, we'll get 6x minus x squared over 2. And then from 4 to 6. So here, when we plug things in, we'll get 6 times 6, which is 36. We'll plug in 6 and square it. Well, that'll be 36 over 2, which will be 18. That'll be our upper limit of integration. And then when we plug in 4, we'll get 6 times 4, that's 24. Uh, we'll get 4 squared, which is 16, divided by uh, 2 is going to give us 8. 36 minus 18 is 18. 24 minus 8, I guess that's going to give us um, 16. Well, 18 minus 16 gives us a value of 2. So this uh, other part, uh, the right side has an area of 2. We said the left part had an area of 16 over 3. So now we can just add those together. So 16 thirds plus 2 over 1, which would be, well, 6 thirds. We can say the area in total uh, would have value 22 over 3.